Hi, this is ITTV. I'm Dr. Meena, your biology teacher, meeting you again for lesson two of Form 5 Biology under the chapter for transportation. Now, in lesson two, we are going to be discussing and looking deeply into the circulatory system. Under the lesson of circulatory system, we are going to see what is a circulatory system, what are the three components that make up the circulatory system in humans and animals, what are the mediums of transport in humans and animals, and to explain the function of blood and hemolymph in transport. So by the end of today's lesson, you should know and understand what a circulatory system means and what are its components, what is its medium and what are the functions of blood and a similar blood-like fluid which functions in insects called hemolymph. Now, let us go to today's lesson. There are two important systems in the transport in humans and animals. One is the blood circulatory system which consists of medium, vessels and pump. We'll take a deeper look at that later. The other system is the lymphatic system, which comprises of the lymphatic vessels and lymphoid tissues. Now, the blood circulatory system is the main transportation system to distribute all the required nutrients and the gases to the organs, tissues and cells, while eliminating the toxic waste. The lymphatic system is a major transport system in defense. What is a circulatory system? A circulatory system is actually the flow of fluids throughout all the organs, tissues and cells in an advanced organism such as a human or an animal to transport the required nutrients and to eliminate the waste products. Now let us see what makes up the components of a blood circulatory system. As it was mentioned earlier, the blood circulatory system comprises of pump, blood vessels and medium. Let us take a look at this slide. The components of the blood circulatory system. What is understood as a pump is actually the heart which functions to pump the blood throughout the whole organism and the blood vessels such as arteries, veins and capillaries are the channels as to how the blood reaches all the required cells, tissues and organs and of course the medium for distributing all the required nutrients and for eliminating the waste are none other than blood or hemolymph. A deeper look at this breakdown will be shown in the next slide. A closer look at the components of the blood circulatory system. We come to the heart. The heart is the most important organ of the blood circulatory system. The heart is also the most robust muscle system of the human circulatory system. The heart contracts and relaxes rhythmically to create a pressure that forces the blood through the blood vessels to all the parts of the body. It works tirelessly to pump more than 100,000 liters of blood every day. The blood vessels comprising of the arteries which carry the oxygenated blood and veins which carry the deoxygenated blood and the capillaries which are the network for the cells transport the blood throughout the body. The blood is the fluid component of the circulatory system which transports the materials from one part of the body to the other. The human heart is the most robust muscle system of the human body. It is only the size of a fist but it works tirelessly and it beats no less than 100,000 times in a day. 
Can you imagine what would happen to us if it just tries to take a short break? That's why we end up hearing of stories about cardiac arrest. The blood vessels comprising of the arteries, vein and capillaries form a major transportation network. Their extension covers approximately 161,000 kilometers in the human body. The artery carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to all parts of the body while the vein carries deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body back to the heart. The blood is the medium of transport in many multicellular organisms including human beings, animals such as elephants, invertebrates, reptiles, amphibians and the birds. In a normal human body, we have about 4.7 to 5 litres of blood and that forms 1 eleventh of a human body weight. Now let us take a look at the main functions of the blood circulatory system. The blood circulatory system plays an important role in transport, homeostasis and in disease defence. Now let us take a closer look. The blood circulatory system plays a major role in transporting materials such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, hormones and excretory products. It also plays a major role in homeostasis or balancing of the human body. It regulates blood pressure, osmotic pressure through the kidneys, it also balances the pH within the range of 7.2 to 7.4 and it maintains the body temperature around 37 degrees Celsius. The blood circulatory system also plays a very important role in defense against disease via blood clotting, phagocytosis and production of antibodies. Now let us take a look at blood as the medium of transport and what are its various functions. The oxygen from the lungs are transported to the body tissues in the form of oxyhemoglobin. The blood also transports carbon dioxide from the body tissues to the lungs. The carbon dioxide either appears in the form of bicarbonate molecules almost to 70% of it and 23% of it are carboxyhemoglobin and 7% are dissolved carbon dioxide in the blood. Nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, lipids also get absorbed from the gut system to the liver and then written to the general circulation. Waste products of metabolism such as urea and creatinine are transported from the liver to the kidneys for elimination. Water which is absorbed from the large intestines are written to the body tissues, also thanks to the blood transportation system. The heat that is produced by the enormous metabolic processes carried out in the liver and muscles are distributed to all parts of the body, hence maintaining the body temperature at around 37 degrees Celsius. The blood is also a vital transportation system for hormones that are produced by the endocrine glands and carried to their target organs. Wow, what a great feat by the blood circulatory system. Now let us take a look at another counterpart of blood. Something that is similar to the functions of the blood but not quite like the blood. We are going to discuss about hemolymph and its functions. Hemolymphs gained a lot of uh, attention as the system of transport in lower multicellular organisms, for example, arthropods and mollusks. Let us take a closer look. Now this is a picture of a grasshopper. A grasshopper belongs to the arthropod family or the family of insects. 
It has a very unique system called the open circulatory system whereby heart has pores called ostia which pumps the hemolymph or the blood-like fluid into a cavity called hemocyl. This supplies all the nutrients to the various parts of the grasshopper. The hemolymph is a blood-like fluid but it is colorless in insects because it does not have any hemoglobin or other respiratory pigments. It is found within the hemocyl or the cavity within the arthropods. The hemolymph directly bathes the tissues and internal organs thus enabling diffusion of substances in and out of the cells. The functions of the hemolymph are very much like the blood. Now let us take a look at this slide. The hemolymph functions to transport water, inorganic salts, nutrients, waste products and hormones just like the blood in an advanced multicellular organism. However, the difference between the hemolymph and the blood is the hemolymph is in direct contact with the cell body and hence the water, inorganic salts, nutrients and hormones diffuse directly. Likewise, the waste products from the body of cells diffuse directly into the hemolymph. So we have concluded our lesson on the circulatory system by taking a look at the multicellular organism and the function of blood and the function of hemolymph in a lower multicellular organism such as an arthropod. In order to test our understanding, let us do some questions. The first question is rather easy. I'm sure you can guess it well. Circulatory system is the dash through the tissues and organ of the organism. The choices are A. Flow of fluid B. Flow of substances C. Mass flow of fluid and D. Flow of nutrients and waste products Do you recall our definition on the circulatory system? The circulatory system is defined as the flow of fluids that transports nutrients and waste products throughout, throughout the whole organism. Hence, the answer is A. Now, let us move on to question number two. List the three major components of the circulatory system. One, medium. Two, vessels. Three, pump. Four, vein. As it was already shown in the introductory slide, the three major components of the circulatory system are none other than yes, medium, vessels and pump. So the answer is as easy as one, two, three. The answer is A. Now let us do something a little more difficult. Which of the following organisms need a circulatory system? The choices are amoeba, B. paramecium, C. rabbit, D. yeast. You have to do a little thinking here. Now let us take a look at amoeba. Is amoeba a multicellular organism? No, we have learned from our previous lessons that an amoeba is a unicellular organism. Likewise, paramecium is also a unicellular organism. How about the yeast? For your understanding, a yeast is a very simple multicellular organism that engages in simple diffusion. So that leads us to C, which is the mighty rabbit. The mighty rabbit is an example of a mammal with a closed circulatory system, much like the ones that we have in a human body. Okay, now let us move on to question number four. Okay, question number four. In most animals, dash is the transport medium. The choices given are A. Hemolymph, B. Blood, C. Lymph and D. Blood plasma. Which is the most likely answer here? Now let us take a look at hemolymph. Hemolymph is a colourless blood-like fluid found mostly in arthropods and mollusks. And hence, it is not the common medium in most animals. Hence, A is eliminated. 
C. Lymph. Lymph is the defense medium and not a transport medium. D. The blood plasma does not have red blood cells which are involved in transporting oxygen or carbon dioxide. Hence, it cannot be termed as the transport medium. So this leaves us with the choice of B, blood, which comprises both the red blood cells as well as the plasma and hence serves as the most important transport medium. We have already done four questions. I hope by answering these questions, it has emphasized on your understanding on today's lesson. Now let us have a recap on what we have learned today. Today we have learned what a circulatory system means. What are the components of the circulatory system? Can you recall them? Yes, it comprises of a pump and in a human system, the pump is referred to as the heart. It comprises of the vessels. In the human system, they are the blood vessels and it comprises of a medium. And in the human system, it is the blood. We have also understood the functions of the blood and the functions of a blood-like fluid which exists in animals such as the insects and mollusks which is called hemolymph. By understanding the various components of the circulatory system, I am sure we can take a deeper look at the components of the heart and the blood system in our coming lessons. So that concludes our lesson on circulatory system. Till we meet again in our next lesson, signing off, I'm Dr. Mina from ITTV. Thank you.